it's Trina and this is my December monthly recommendations video. Our topic for this month was new to us authors. We thought it would be a great way to end the year by reflecting on the authors that we discovered for the first time this year. In 2016 I read a total of 20 authors that I had never read anything by before. Some of these I read more than one book by them this year. There were 12 authors who had backlist titles so some of these authors have had dozens of books published in the past. They have multiple series and I just had never read anything by them before. Those 12 authors were Jojo Moyes, Michael Punk, April Genevieve Tuhalki, Adam Silvera, Shannon Hale, Robin Talley, Melissa Gray, Marisha Pessel, Becky Albertalli, Jessica Love, Alexandra Bracken, and Anne Brashares. The other eight authors who were new to me this year were actually debut authors, so the first book that they've ever published came out in 2016. And those eight authors were Emily Henry, Emily France, Roshni Chakshi, Jeff Zintner, Shannon Parker, Sarah Ella, Meredith Russo, and Julie Eshbaugh. So out of these 20 authors, there are 10 books that were my favorites of this list that I want to recommend to you guys today. The one I'm going to start with is the Sisterhood series by Anne Brashares. She has many books out and I read her entire Sisterhood series this year. It's about a group of four girls that have been friends all of their lives and in the first book they are facing their first ever summer apart and they vow to keep in touch by sending each other letters and mailing this pair of jeans that somehow fits all of them back and forth, hopefully to have like these grand adventures and great experiences while wearing these jeans because they feel like the jeans are kind of a symbol of their bond and their friendship. There are five books in the series and one of the things that I really loved about it is that it grows with the characters from high school to college and then the last book does have a big time jump and follows them as adults. I loved many aspects to the characters in their lives and I really loved the friendships and how that was really the forefront of the message in these books. Next, I finally read Alexandra Brecken. I ended up reading two books by her this year, and she's probably the most known for her The Darkest Minds trilogy, but I actually started by reading Passenger, which came out in January, and I really had trouble getting into this book, but then by the end I had totally turned around and was really, really enjoying it. And having read Passenger first, even though it's her most recent book, that really made me want to get into her writing more, so then I went back and read The Darkest Minds. If you aren't familiar with either of these, Passenger is a time travel story. You travel to so many different times and locations around the world. I really enjoyed the travel aspect. I thought she really nailed the atmosphere of each location. I really felt like I was traveling the world in that book. And The Darkest Minds is a dystopian trilogy where in the future teenagers have developed these psychic mind powers. I really enjoyed both of these and would recommend them both. The next author who is new to be this year that I would recommend is Jessica Love. I read In Real Life by her and I really really enjoyed this one. It is about two people who have an online friendship and one of them develops feelings for the other one and she decides to actually go and meet him in real life and see if they have more than a friendly connection and when she does meet him she finds out that he may not have been totally honest about some things that she thought she knew about him. I found the premise of this book like totally interesting, this whole thing with online friendships, online dating, people portraying themselves in a certain way online. It is a pretty fluffy kind of contemporary novel but I blew through it in like just a couple of sittings and I really appreciated that about it. Becky Albertalli was also a new to me author this year. I read Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. This book was my favorite book of the year. So it was number one in my best books of the year list. If you missed that video, by the way, I'm going to put a link to it down below where I do talk about my six favorite books of the year. Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda was number one. If you aren't familiar with this one, it is about a boy named Simon who is not out to his school or to his family, but he is gay and he has a crush on a boy that he knows online. And all he knows about this boy is his nickname and that he goes to his same high school, but he is not out either. So Simon is having the these feelings and maybe wanting to come out and also figuring out who his online crush is. It's so adorable and it really really captured the feelings of high school crushes and online relationships and like friendships to romance and stuff like that. I really enjoyed this book so much and just I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. It's my favorite book of the year. Of course I loved it. 
This year I also read Melissa Gray for the first time. I read The Girl at Midnight and its sequel, The Shadow Hour. This is an urban fantasy series that has a lot of elements to it that I think fans of the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series would love. Like, there's just a lot of good things about it that are common in very popular YA series. It is also own voices in terms of the Latina main character. And there are some male-male relationships and I just thought it was a very exciting thing. So I enjoyed it and I would definitely recommend it. Next, I really enjoyed enjoyed Night Film by Marisha Pessel. This is an adult mystery novel and I just enjoyed this book and like how it made you wonder which thing was true because it kind of set up the story to go a couple of different ways. It's about a director who's very famous and very reclusive. His daughter ends up dead one day. It was declared a suicide by police but there's a little bit of like evidence that says maybe she was actually murdered and the main character who we follow is a journalist who decides he wants to start investigating this case because something just has never felt right about this girl and her father and maybe like their whole family and the relationship they had with each other and he thinks she was being haunted by some kind of demons from her past and he's trying to figure out what that was. The next four books on this list are all of my debut authors who I read this year. So first of all, I have to mention Sarah Ella. She wrote Unblemished. She is one of my good friends and she is a fellow booktuber, so I'm gonna have a link to her channel down below. Unblemished is an urban fantasy series about a girl who discovers that there are parallel worlds. And there's another parallel world where she finds herself wrapped up in this ongoing eternal battle between light and darkness. There are so many fairy tales esque themes in this book and I just really think if you like fairy tales you would enjoy this one too. This is a sort of a trilogy so I did feel like it was kind of complicated for me to keep up with all the characters and all of the world building that was going on but this is a story that was very unique and it did stand out to me and I can't wait to see where this series goes. I also really loved The Girl Who Fell by S.M. Parker. This is another book that made it into my top six list of the year. It just was such an impactful story to me. This one is about an abusive relationship. You know that from the book jacket from the summary and you're watching these two characters meet and how they get involved with each other and then how the main female character figures out that this is not a healthy relationship. The writing was really easy to read. It kept me engaged. I like that in some parts this book took stereotypes about abusive relationships and ran with it because those things are stereotypes for a reason and then in other ways the book kind of broke out of different stereotypes. I do feel like it's such an important thing to talk about in YA fiction but this is definitely not like the only book out there that handles abusive relationships for young adults but we need more like this and I really appreciated that this book was giving us a story like that. Next is Meredith Russo who wrote If I Was Your Girl. This is a book about a trans girl and the author is also a trans woman so it is own voices. Primarily this is a contemporary romance. This is about Amanda after she has transitioned having her first relationship with a boy and she's moved to a new school where people don't know that she is trans. We also have flashbacks that show what it was like being bullied as a young child. There were a couple of things about the writing and like the progression of the story that weren't my favorite but this is still a book that I really loved. I would consider it one of my favorites of the year even though it didn't quite make the top six but I highly highly recommend this one. And finally I would recommend Ivory and Bone by Julie Eshbaugh. This is the first book in I think it's going to be a trilogy. This one is set in a prehistoric time period which I haven't never really read about. It is kind of a romance but it's a very slow burn romance like hate to love type of situation. It is very reminiscent of Pride and Prejudice and that is because it is a kind of inspired by very loose retelling and I knew that going into this book and it made it so fun for me to read it and kind of figure out which character was representing which original character from Pride and Prejudice. And another thing that was really interesting to me about this book was the way that it was told. I know that this did not work for everyone, but it really worked for me. It is told in kind of a second person narrative. The book starts with our character Cole telling Maya the story of how he met her. That plus the prehistoric time period, which I have never really read anything set at that time just made this story really refreshing and unique to me and I really really enjoyed it. So those were my 10 favorite books that were by new to me authors that I first read this year. I definitely am looking forward to reading more by all of these authors. I do also want to quickly say that although they did not make it into my top 10 favorite books, Robin Talley, Adam Silvera, and Roshni Chakshi are also new to me authors this year that I want to read more by. Let me know who your favorite newly discovered authors this year were down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you will join in with our monthly recommendations topics in the new year. Our topic for January is historical fiction and I need some recommendations from you guys. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the comments. Bye!